All right, hey everyone, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about the different types of wires we see in a residential home, okay? So just quickly, we have 14.2. These are, you know, for our plugs, lights, switches, just kind of common items. And I'm gonna break all this stuff down in more depth. Uh, this is 12.2. We're typically using this for kitchen counter plugs. Something that's a little bit more dedicated, we use a 12 gauge wire, which is rated for up to 12, uh, 20 amps. But again, always look at your code rules because depending on if it's general use or if it's for motors, uh, different rules apply, okay? This is just like the number 12-2, except it is 12-3. So you can see that there is uh, three conductors in there. All right. So we have a red, black, and a white. Sometimes we use this for three phase. If it's like a 208 um, furnace or something, we might use uh, just 12-3. And then we get our three conductors. And then uh, the black, the red, and then the white would be our blue. Okay. Because in Canada, it's red, black, blue for our three phase. So we have... Uh, 10 gauge, so this is 10 two. This isn't used as often, but maybe sometimes for like an air conditioner where it's just, you have two phases, okay? So again, this is just two hots and then a bond. Again, this is not a ground, it is a bond. And we might be using this again for like an air conditioner and this is number 10. And just like the 10 two, this is 10 three. And we are typically using this for a dryer because we have our two hots, so a black and a red are our hots. And then we need a neutral a lot of the times for the electronics on these equipment. So for example, the dryer is gonna have a light bulb as well as the actual electronics when you're turning on the unit and changing your settings, you always need that neutral so that you still get 120 off of one of the legs. In a typical residential home, we really aren't using uh, armored cable too much. Maybe the odd time if we're gonna be wiring in the mechanical room uh, for the furnace or, so or stuff like that. And again, this is just for a typical residential home. If you're dealing with custom homes that is actually kind of more on the commercial side of things now to actually work with this you're actually supposed to use a hacksaw you cut it on an angle you break it off uh, but a lot of guys on the site they just snap it and then you cut it with your uh, side cutters you also have to uh, use an anti-short and that just literally just goes on and you put it in like this and this is this is to prevent um, it shorting out so for example you always need to put a connector on here with this as well and Sometimes if people tighten down too much, it can short out, okay? So in other words, it can pinch and um, the two conductors can touch each other and that's what we call a short, okay? All right, so let's get into this video more depth. Again, if you guys do wanna stay updated with the website, you can sign up for my free electrical book. It's gonna teach you all about uh, becoming an apprentice electrician. Just go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe, okay? All right, so let's cover our most common wire in a home and it's 14.2. Okay, again, it's for all our standard plugs, lights, switches, all that stuff, rated for 15 amps. But again, always look at the code rules in your tables, depending on what you're doing, okay? So it's important that you always look at the writing on the wire, because it's gonna tell you what it's allowed for. And again, in our code rules, it will even explain it more, depending on certain tables and stuff, okay? So here you can see this is a 14 gauge wire. This has two conductors. You can see here, NMD90. So this is our most common type of wire in the home. Okay, uh, again, Romex is just like the brand name, but you might hear it called like Lumex, Romex, or NMD90. And uh, continuing on here, the next one I just wanna quickly share. So um, 300 volts, so this is only rated for 300 volts. So for example, if you are on a job site and you need, you need to wire something in 600 volts, again, always look at your wire and what it's rated for. And I believe this is just like for like the insulation of the wire, what it's rated for. Now, this one's a very, very important to pay attention to this FT1, okay, it's FT1. So depending on certain situations, this is just a general wire. We're able to uh, pull it anywhere. But if we want to pull wires where our ducting is in regards to furnaces, and I believe we call these plenums, uh, you have to make sure that the wire type is rated for, I think in here in Canada, I think it's FT4, there might even be FT6, but again, code rules change all the time. Same with new equipment, but this isn't a really important one to pay attention to because what happens is if there's a house fire, this burns, right? And it produces toxic fumes and it will go back into the HVAC system and it will literally pump that air, right? All those toxic fumes all throughout the building. And so we are not allowed to use this in certain situations as FT1, but for general purpose stuff, yes. But again, you always got to pay attention uh, for what type of wire you're allowed in what situation, okay? So again, this is a 14-2. Again, you can see there is two conductors. So we have a black, which is our hot. We have a neutral, 
which is our white, and we have a bond. Again, this is not a ground. There's only one ground in your whole system that is at the panel, and this is a bond. Um, one other thing to say is this can be two phases. So for example, if you do want it to be a phase and B phase, you can do that. Okay, onto our next wire. So this is our second most common type of wire we see in a residential home. Again, this is rated for 20 amps for general use stuff. And we're typically using this for kitchen counter plugs. Um, okay, and again, you can see there's two hots. So you have your black, you have your white, and you have your bond wire. Okay, again, let's just look at the, at the actual text here. So again, you can see that this is NMD90. Okay, so again, that's the type of jacket. And in your code rules, it's going to tell you where you're allowed to use this wire. 12-2, uh, so this is number 12, as well as two conductors. Again, every wire brand does things a little bit different. Again, you can see the um, voltage rating. But again, look at the FT1. So we're only allowed to use this in certain situations. All right, so looking at a 12-3 wire. So 12-3, we actually have three conductors. We have two hots, a neutral, and a bond. But again, we can use the white as another conductor. For example, if we want it to be for like a three-phase furnace or a three-phase motor where it's 208 volts, again, you're just going to have, again, here in Canada, it's red, black, blue. So um, red would be A, black would be B, and then white would be your blue, okay? Um, again, let's just look at the rating here. Because again, this is really important to know because when you're a general electrician, you know, typically you're just going to pick up a wire and you're just going to start wiring because you know it's for general purpose stuff. But as soon as you start dealing with certain types of equipment, you know, for example, you think about that air conditioner. Okay, it's a little bit special compared to just a basic plug. And so this is where you have to start looking at this type of stuff, okay? Again, if you are on a commercial job site, a lot of times your prints are going to be telling you um, what type of wire, what wire size, the voltage, the phases, all that kind of stuff, okay? Okay. All right, so again, we're going to see here, so again, NMD90. So again, that is the jacket type. We see here that um, it is 12 gauge, three conductors, 300 volts, and again, that FT1. Okay, so we've got to be careful in what we call plenums. Because again, if it, if it burns, this produces toxic fumes. All right, so our next wire is a 10-2. So you can see there is just a black and a white, and again, that bond. All right. Uh, sorry, this one is not labeled very well. I just got just a really, really short piece of wire. This is all I have on me right, right now. But I'll show you what is here. So again, 300 volts and the FT1, okay? Anything else um, doesn't really help much. <laughs> so again, this is a 10-2. is rated for up to 30 amps in a typical home for general purpose stuff. But again, always look at your code rules. With the electrical code book, things change very, very often. Um, now, typically, we don't use a 10-2 very often, but a 10-2, we are typically using for an air conditioner or what they call like a PTAC, which is sometimes in like condos where it produces both heating and air conditioning, and it's like usually under like a window. So again, this is 10-2. Um, you have your hot, your neutral, your bond, and again, this is not as common. We are typically using it just for like motor loads where we actually just want to get, for example, 240 or 208 out of it, depending on what the uh, electrical panel's voltage is, if it's a single phase or a three phase system. All right, so that is a 10-2. All right, our next type of wire is a 10-3. So again, it has three conductors and the bond. You can see the bond in there. It is that orange jacket letting us know that it's number 10. So as you become a more experienced electrician, you start to understand that orange is our number 10. You know, white is our number 14 and then we have our yellow which is our number 12 okay so again these are very very common wire colors that you will see and for this particular part of the video again i'm just covering the 10-3 wire so again three conductors and the bond so again let's just look at the writing here just for clarity okay so you can see that it is a 10 gauge has three conductors uh, nmd 90 and then again i want to show you the 300 volts and then again, the FT1. Where are we using this type of wire? Again, typically with like a dryer because uh, we need two hots. So for example, for 240 in a home, or if you're in a condo situation, you're gonna have probably 208 for a three phase system. Uh, but again, regardless, you still have your two hots. So you have a red, a black, your white is gonna be your neutral for that 120 for all the electronics like I was mentioning, or even like the light bulb inside of the dryer. When you open it up, there's a light in there. And then you have your bond. All right, our next wire is an 8.3, okay? So this is rated up to 40 amps in a typical home. And typically where we are using this is on our 
um, ranges. An oven and a cooktop is, I believe, what they call a range. If you've never heard that term before, that was always confusing when I first started uh, being an electrician. But again, we have an oven, a cooktop, and then I believe a range is an all-in-one kind of unit. All right, so we have uh, two hots. So we have our red black for our 240 or 208. Then we have that neutral because just like the dryer, we have electronics on the oven, right? If you want to, you know, set a timer or set the temperature or just the light bulb inside. So we need that neutral. And then I believe how it works is it's just going to use like one of the legs for 120 in addition to being the 240 or 208. And then again, we have that bond wire as well. Okay. So again, just for uh, clarity, we will just look at the writing, the text. So again, you can see it is an eight gauge wire. There is three conductors in there. It is the NMD90. So it's a little hard to see. Uh, again, Romex is just like the brand name of this particular wire. Uh, keep going. So 300 volts FT1. All right. So just understand that this type of wire is just for general purpose kind of stuff. Uh, but you always have to be careful where you are running it. All right. And then this one here is what we call a uh, armored cable or AC90 um, or BX, whatever you want to call it. As you can see, there is not... Um, writing on here and stuff like that. But again, typically we would be using this in a fire rated area. All right. Um, sometimes you might see it red. Typically we do that to identify if it's fire alarm. Uh, this stuff gets a lot more expensive as well as you, even each wire size that goes up, it starts getting significantly more expensive. You know, so for example, if you're on the job site and for, I'll, I'll just share that with you, this type of wire at nighttime, it's like you make sure you put back in the van or you make sure that you lock up in such a way where it can't be stolen. Whereas, you know, a typical, uh, 14, two wire like this, like, you know, this is just basic wire. Um, and it's not as expensive as this, like, you know, a full roll of this could be 500, maybe a thousand bucks, especially for like the bigger rolls. So this stuff gets expensive. And the same thing with your armored cable right here, uh, this stuff gets expensive as well. So in a typical residential home, we are not using armored cable too much because it's expensive. And if we do need to do fire rating and stuff, then many, many times we might just pull this, like for example, like on that furnace in the, in the mechanical room and stuff like that. So you just put your anti-short in there, and you have to use a metal connector. And this does two purposes. One, it actually connects it to the box, but it actually continues on the bond, all right? Because this is metal, this is metal, continues on the bond, all right? Um, and so there you guys go. So that was this video about the different types of wire in a residential home. Uh, this was the beginning of our splicing series. So if you want to stay updated with that, you can go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash free and you can sign up for this training. Uh, the upcoming videos, we are going to break down more about how to be removing the jacket of wire. I'll explain with a knife how you can approach stripping the jacket. So again, for our wire here or actually this is called a cable so for our cable we have our jacket then we have our conductors so you can see this is the conductor the conductor itself also has insulation and then this is our bond all right so really at the end of the day there's no difference between these to the bond okay there's no difference except these are just insulated to protect it from shorting out so you know we might put um the hot on here Okay, so uh, when it comes to wiring we have what's called phases so the black wire might be phase a the white wire is going to be our neutral. This is like our bond. Um, but our upcoming videos will break down first how to remove the wire jacket. The following videos will talk about sh um, stripping the insulation off of these conductors. And you want to do it properly because if you do it wrong, you're going to score. And whenever you score the copper, you do damage it. And so that's it for this video. So if you guys want to stay updated with the website, just visit me over at becominganelectrician.com. I also have my free book for apprentice electricians. You can get that by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in the next video of the splicing series. Again, just go to becomingelectrician.com forward slash free. You will see the splicing series there and you can sign up for all the emails and videos to learn how to splice with our pliers and wire strippers. And now in this video, you knew about the different types of wires in a residential home.